Hi, and welcome to Food Allergy Canada's Allergy Pals Monthly. So my name is Arianne, and I am so excited to welcome to you to this month's session. If you weren't here last time, here's how it works. We talk about a certain topic and have fun polls, interacti interactive activities, and a question and answer time at the end. So this month's theme is on anxiety with food allergies. So a reminder that this webinar is not intended to provide personalized or professional advice. If, you, if food allergy related anxiety is a highly concerning issue in your situation, we recommend you seek the assistance of a professional in your area. So today we're gonna feature some stories, some trivia, some games, Q&A, polls, and a lot more. So I hope everybody is ready to get started because I know I am. So there are a couple of different ways that you guys can participate. So you can say things in the question box. Um, you can also participate by raising your hand and then we'll unmute you and then you can speak to us with your microphone. So let's get right into it. Let's go with our first poll question. So what I wanna know from you guys is how many Allergy Pals monthly sessions you've attended? Is this your first time? So this is a monthly webinar and we'd love for you to attend our future ones. So they're usually on the last Sunday of every month. All right, so I see a lot of people are saying it's their first time. Guys, welcome, I'm so excited that you're here. We have a couple of returning people and a few pros, three or more times. Awesome, guys. So guys, just a little bit about me. So my name is Arianne. I'm allergic to peanuts, tree nuts, fish, and sesame. So my hobbies are traveling, and I love to do some graphic design, like comic book stuff. Um, I love movies. So what makes me feel anxious is flying. So being on an airplane, that's definitely when I get anxious. And how I take my mind off worries is I either talk to my mom or my friends about it, or I usually just like to sit and read a good book by myself. All right, so our next poll question, guys. Anxiety can be another word for feelings. So what are some other words that can mean anxiety? I see a lot of scared, definitely, some worried. Ooh, and a lot of all of the above. All right, so we've got a few for worried, scared, and stressed, but mostly we have all of the above. <clears throat> so what I want you guys to do with me now is I want you to raise your hand if you think it's normal to occasionally feel worried about your food allergies. So today what we're gonna do is learn how to manage some of those anxious feelings. All right, so I see a lot of us have our hands raised. Yeah, all right guys. So what exactly is anxiety? So a feeling of worry or nervousness or unease about something with an uncertain outcome. So let's, let's break that down a little bit. So it's a feeling, and you know what? Tough feelings are totally normal and they can be managed and they're caused by an uncertain outcome. So today, our main goal is to learn what we're turning, about turning uncertainties into certainties. So what makes us feel anxious? So in the chat box, I want you guys to write down some situations that could make you feel anxious with a food allergy. So a couple of situations that we might feel a little anxious about with our food allergy could be maybe dining out at a new restaurant. Maybe it's at our school where food sharing might take place. It could be traveling to a, a new country or a new city or something like that. It could be as simple as being somewhere in the opening where your allergens might be present. It could be if you're being teased or bullied about your, situ about your allergies. So some other situations you guys are bringing up are cross-contamination, which can definitely be a huge issue, right? It can make us feel very anxious and it can definitely be in a lot of the situations that we see here on the screen. So when someone is eating our allergen around us, definitely that can make us feel anxious. And I see a lot of having a reaction 
or symptom-like reactions, right? And that can definitely make us feel anxious. In the chat box again, I want you guys to answer a few questions for me. So let's play a little anxiety, true or false. So it's totally normal to occasionally feel anxious about our food allergies. So in the chat box, why don't you guys write yes or no to that, true or false? And then our next true or false question is, most people don't feel anxious. So do you guys think that is a true or false statement? And our third true or false statement is, everyone else can tell when you're feeling anxious. So do you guys think that is true or false? Is everybody ready to see the results? All right, so number one, it's normal to occasionally feel anxious about our food allergies. So that's totally true. Guys, we know allergic reactions are serious and we definitely want to avoid them. So it's totally normal. So most people don't feel anxious. That's false. So everyone feels anxious at times, whether it's about a food allergy or something else. In our last question, everyone can tell when you feel anxious. That's false. So it may seem so loud and so obvious to you, but others likely won't notice, except those who really know you. So like your parents and your friends and stuff. All right, so let's get another poll question in here. So what do you do to calm down and feel peaceful? So whenever you feel those feelings, whenever you're anxious, what do you do to let off some steam and help feel calm? I see sports is very popular and a lot of other. How about in the chat box, you tell me what other is. So what's your other method of letting off steam? For me, when I feel anxious, I definitely like to read a book or go outside. So, so I see a lot of, I play with my dog or your pet, which is great. They're always great to talk to whenever you feel that way. I see some photography, which is awesome. Karate and swimming, so sports really getting active and healthy. Some breathing exercises, which is awesome. All of these are great answers. And you know what? They all make us and help us feel better. So some healthy habits, according to Anxiety BC, on ways to deal with our anxiousness and deal with those tough feelings is to try and relax. So use some calm breathing to help think more clearly, long and deep breaths in, long and deep breaths out, and then practice visualization. So imagine something powerful in your head for a few minutes, and then that'll make you feel better afterwards. So something that really makes you feel calm and happy. Maybe it's um, an image of your parents or your favorite pet. Maybe it's a place that you really love that makes you feel really calm. Anything that is you can really picture in your mind that helps you feel at ease. So if you want more advice and you want more ways on kind of to deal with these tough feelings and these anxious feelings, you can go to youthanxietybc.com and it is a wonderful resource filled with helpful information and techniques to combat anxiety. So we've put it there in the chat for everyone to click on the link. We encourage you all to go view it. All right, so there are many things we can do to help our feelings. So we can learn more about what's causing that anxiety. So perhaps it's not as bad or as risky as you thought. So maybe you can take a second to kind of do some breathing exercises and then look at the situation and figure out what it is and then assess the risk, right? So you can do something that you really enjoy. So we just talked about ways that we can let off steam and deal with those tough feelings. So maybe it's playing a sport like karate or swimming or getting outside and running around and letting off some of that excess energy. Maybe it's baking or cooking our favorite treat so we can eat it. Maybe it's drawing a picture or writing down some words to kind of express it. Maybe it's escaping to somewhere else by reading a really great book by ourselves. But most importantly, I think it's talk it out. So it's talking to someone who cares, someone who knows you, someone who understands what you're going through, and just kind of venting and letting it all go. 
because I think the best thing is getting different perspectives on the situation and seeing how other people deal with it so you can deal with it better. So in the chat, I would love to hear who you, who you can talk to when you feel anxious. So it can be anybody. So anybody that you can think of that you, whenever you feel upset or you have some tough feelings, anybody that you can talk to. It could be a parent, it could be a friend, it could be a cat, it could be your best stuffed animal friend, anybody that you can think of. So I see a lot of mom and dads and family and friends, and that's really important. Because like we talked about earlier, they're the ones who know you the best, right? They can tell when you're upset or when something's bothering you and they want to help. They want to hear what you have to say. I see a lot of best friends, which is really great because friends always understand. And I see a lot of my favorite stuffed animal, my favorite stuffy, which is so good because sometimes you want to talk to someone and you don't want to hear other things. You just want to let it all off your chest. So that's great. So some things that we talked about are our parents and our friends. So we can also talk to our teachers. If it's a situation at school, we can talk to a nurse or a doctor. If it has to do with our, our food allergies and some questions that we might have, we can talk to our coaches. We can talk to other relatives. Maybe you have a really cool aunt or uncle or cousin. So basically, it can be anybody that you trust, anybody that you feel comfortable sharing with, and anybody that you know wants to hear what's going on with you. So let's practice some tough situations. So what would you tell your parents in this situation? So write it in the chat. So if your mom or your dad or someone says, you haven't really been yourself today, is there something that you want to tell us? How would you respond to that? How would you let those feelings go and really tell them what's going on with you? So maybe you could say something along the lines of, mom, someone joked around about my food allergies today at school, or someone brought my allergen to school today and they're sitting really close to me. So I see I'm not feeling great today, which is a good way of saying that you have something that's bothering you, or Yes, I haven't had a good day today. And then you tell them what's on your mind, right? Tell them that, no, my day wasn't that great and this is why. Or you could say, I don't feel well. Or you could tell them that you're nervous about something and you really wanna get something off your chest. So what's important to remember here is that our parents and our family, our friends, they care about us. And if they notice that something's wrong, they really wanna hear what's going on, right? So if you tell them, I'm scared, I'm going to have a reaction, the two of you or the group of you can work it out together to help you feel less anxious. So let's get our next poll question. So which of the following places causes you to worry with your food allergy? So out of all of these places, which one causes you to feel the most worried when it comes to your food allergies? Definitely restaurant seems to be the main one. And guys, it's totally normal to feel anxious there. All right, so no other for worried. So we have a few for school and airplane. So it's definitely normal to feel anxious there, but mostly for restaurants. So I get that guys. So what this shows is it can happen everywhere. So you can feel anxious or nervous or have some of those tough feelings anywhere. All right, so let's get into something a little fun. So allergy wheel of fortune. So I'm gonna slowly reveal a couple of letters at a time for a special phrase. And I want you all to guess what it is in the question box. So the first one to guess it correctly wins. Is everybody ready? Awesome, let's get started. All right, we have a couple of vowels to begin with, a few E's. Do we have any takers yet? No, I'll reveal some more. All right, some R's. Ooh, some more vowels. All right, does anybody have any ideas? All right, we're getting closer. All right, any ideas? Oh, I see we've got one person who got it. Jen, awesome. 
Oh, we've got some more coming in. Everyone got it. All right, guys, good job. So be careful, not fearful. Good job, everybody. So be careful, not fearful. What do you think that means? Type it into the chat box and tell me what you think the phrase be careful, not fearful means. All right, so I see a couple of be aware, not worried, which is definitely true. Be cautious, not afraid uh, all the time, very true. So I see a lot of be cautious about your allergy, but not be scared, which is so true. Oh, and a couple of don't let allergies hold you back, which is so, so true. All right. So what I think it means is always take precautions with your food allergies. So keep the risk in perspective and then always know you'll be okay because you have your auto injector with you. You know to speak up if you have symptoms of an allergic reaction. You know to tell people when you feel uncomfortable or when you feel upset, something like that. So it's about taking proper precautions with our food allergies to always know that we'll be okay. So we're careful, we're not fearful, right? Our allergies are never gonna hold us back. All right, so we're gonna get into some question time now. <clears throat> so we have a few rules for question time. So no parent questions, just the kids. So you can either type your question or you can raise your hand like we mentioned earlier and you'll be unmuted and you can say it out loud. So just a few things to keep in mind when we're asking questions is to keep it short and sweet. So no medical advice, sorry, we can't do that. And then it's one question at a time and two if there's time. So let's get started with one of the questions that I got emailed to me beforehand. So the question is, what's the best way of dealing with being scared? So it's always helpful to talk to others, right? Talk it out. Don't keep it to yourself and seek assistance of someone you really trust. So like the people we mentioned before. So like your parents, your teachers, or your friends. They can help you, but you need to speak up. So the main thing I think when it comes to the best way of dealing with being scared is to remember to always say it out loud. Talk to someone, don't hold it all in. So let's go with another question. So how do I deal with dining out at a new place? They often make me feel nervous. So I know a bunch of us in our last poll put restaurants as a place that makes us feel kind of nervous or anxious. It's easy to feel some nerves when eating at a new place since there are new foods and dishes that maybe seem unfamiliar. Most importantly, we need to explain our allergies to the wait staff. Ask to speak to a manager or chef and they likely deal with allergic customers every day and they wanna help you. They want to understand. So they'll help you get a menu that's safe for you. And if you have more questions for them, don't be afraid to ask. Never be afraid or embarrassed to talk about your allergies and share it with a bunch of people. They're there to help you. And most importantly, they're there to make sure that you have a safe and enjoyable meal. So one question we have here is, does it hurt to use an auto injector? So, I think the most important thing to remember here is that you'll feel better when you use it. It's there to help you, right? It's not there to be scary and it's not there to intimidate you. Your auto injector is there to help you. That's the main thing to remember. Thank you so much for that question. So another question we have here is, I always think I'm having symptoms of an allergy. How do I know when it's real or not? So it would be a good idea to see your allergist and then and talk to them about it. They can help you kind of navigate your feelings and your symptoms. So then the most important thing there is to talk to your allergist and your parents about that. Thank you so much for that question. So what are ways to calm down when feeling anxious? So like we mentioned before, talk to an adult who can help you sort through it and just kind of talk it out, talk your feelings out. Talk, try to think through the situation and what makes you feel anxious. So kind of put everything into per perspective. 
So always remember that you'll be okay because you carry your auto injector with you and that you're a pro at avoiding your allergens. So you've always taken things into perspective. And then remember that finding things that help you calm down. So kind of the stuff we answered in our poll, either it's sports, talking to someone, playing music, reading a book, but most importantly, it's talking with someone that you trust and that wants to help you is a great place to start. So thank you so much for that question. All right, so I see we have an audio question from Annie. How do I not be scared of the peanut allergy? Thank you so much for that question. So like we mentioned before, a good way to deal with our tough feelings and like fear and anxiety and all that is to learn more about it. To learn where we can find our allergen, how we can stay safe with it, how we can avoid it, precautions that we can take like telling people about it, carrying our auto injector. It's the main thing I think again like with our other question was communication, right? Making sure that we understand it, we've talked to our parents, we've talked to our allergists, and we tell other people about it. We make sure everybody around us knows about our peanut allergy. We make sure they know where our auto injector is. And we make sure that we tell them when we feel nervous or when we feel scared or when we feel upset. We make sure that we're talking those feelings through and really communicating it so we can feel better. Thank you so much for that question. So how do I feel safe when I go to a friend's house who eats the food I'm allergic to? So if you go visit a friend for a sleepover or something like that. So I think the number one most important thing that you need to do in that situation is communicate your allergies ahead of time. So either you tell your friend, I'm allergic to this, could we maybe keep it in a cupboard and wipe down the cabinets? Or you have your parents talk to their parents about your food allergies to communicate them ahead of time. So thank you so much for that question. So well, another question that came in is, if someone bullies me, what can I do? So I think the number one thing here is to talk to a parent or an adult about the situation. But also, just so you know, we do have a topic in a future webinar coming up on this subject on bullying and how to deal with it. So we hope that you guys register and come back. But most importantly, I think if you are being bullied or if someone says something mean or something that makes you uncomfortable about your food allergies, you should talk to someone. So if you feel comfortable telling them how it makes you feel, so if you feel comfortable talking to that person and letting them know that it doesn't make you happy when you say these things or stuff like that, that can also help too. So thank you for that question. And I hope you guys do come back to another webinar about bullying. So guys, if you have questions about food allergies in general or about reactions and stuff like that, a good resource to go to is foodallergycanada.ca. So they have a lot of really great information and really great tips and stuff like that when it comes to food allergies kind of in general. So the last question that I'm gonna to do today is how to best deal with anxiety from a reaction that happened a while ago. So it is definitely hard to get over the feeling that you had during a reaction. Sometimes anxiety can happen because of things that are unknown. It's important to follow up on a reaction to find out exactly what happened, like what was the cause, and then to talk about it. So how could it have been prevented? How can you prevent it in the future? Stuff like that. It can be helpful to think of reactions as a learning experience. And that'll make you kind of wiser so you'll be able to identify those risks in situations in the future. So like we, like we mentioned earlier, being careful, not fearful, right? So if it's continuing to really cause serious anxiety or issues, consider talking to a professional. So uh, I think the main thing from all of these questions today is that talking it out is the best thing that we can do. So thank you so much everyone for all of your questions. <clears throat> so if you want more information, you can visit foodallergycanada.ca for some tips on managing food allergies and emotions. So, 
next month's session is April 29th. It'll be the same time, 7 till 8 p.m. And the topic is gonna to be raising awareness. So if you wanna to get to this webinar, you can register at foodallergycanada.ca slash events. So you can also watch past Allergy Pals webinars at foodallergycanada.ca slash webinars. So I wanna thank everyone for joining us today and I really hope you can make it next time. I wanna give a special thanks to the University of Alberta for the original outline of the mentorship program and TD Securities for their financial support. So thank you so much for your questions and thank you so much for attending today and I hope you all have a wonderful Sunday evening. So thank you. Goodbye everyone.